And it's always a privilege to stand behind the pulpit to speak God's word. And I'm grateful to have the opportunity here this morning. I'm going to ask you to grab your Bibles with me and open them up to Matthew chapter 9. And we're going to read a few verses starting in verse 27. Matthew 9, 27. Matthew 9, 27, if you don't have your Bible or if you don't have it on your phone, um, hopefully that's the only thing you're looking at on your phone right now. You can also look at the screens. If your phone's too tempting, just put it away and you can look at the screens. Let's read in verse 27. The Bible reads, when Jesus departed from there, two blind men followed him. Somebody say, followed him. Amen. Crying out and saying, son of David, have mercy on us. And when he had come into the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus said to them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? Turn to somebody next to you and ask them, Do you believe? Okay, I know some of them, they didn't want to look at you. Look at them again and tell them, Do you believe? <laughs> Jesus said to them, Do you believe? Let's read the next verse as well. The Bible said, do you believe that I am able to do this? They said to him, yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes saying, according to you, let, in your faith, let it be done to you. Bow your heads and close your eyes with me one more time this morning. Father, we thank you for your presence that's so evident in this place. We thank you for just allowing us to even come and gather and to worship you, to acknowledge you, to exalt your holy name. To be able to stand in your presence alone is more than enough. And Lord, we thank you for allowing us to hear from your word. I pray that everyone here, Lord, every ear would be tuned to your voice, Lord. That you would speak, that you would anoint your word, anoint your messenger. Let it come forth with power and clarity today to do the work you designed it for. In Jesus' name, and everybody says, amen, amen and amen. You can go ahead and be seated this morning. We're going to look back at those few verses in a few moments, but this morning we're going to be looking at two different types of people, and I pray that this morning it not only challenges us, as I know as it challenges me in my faith and in my walk with the Lord, I pray it not only challenges us, uh, maybe it'll help correct us a little bit in some different areas, uh, maybe it'll help shift us. And maybe for some, it'll help get us to maybe recognize some things and make sure that we are heading in the right direction to be who God called us to be. Now, the two different types of people that we're going to be talking about this morning are fans and followers. Men, fans and followers. Now, if you're like me, I'm a, a sports person and I hear fans, I automatically think of sports teams. And even within sports, I'll say like this, I've been a sports fan my whole life, but then I follow my teams. Like teams that I personally like, I follow them. I hope there's some Springbok fans right here. But some of you were fans until we won the Rugby World Cup, and then all of a sudden you were like, you got the jersey, you're celebrating. We welcome you. No, I'm just kidding. Some of you are looking at me like, you're not even from here. I've only been here a few years, but I follow the Springboks, all right? Uh, I'll put my knowledge of them, uh, you know, up against quite a few that I've talked to. But I, I'm like that naturally with sports, right? That's, that's just me. Like if one of my teams, if they, you know, something happens or a player gets injured, I feel like I got hurt, right? That's like how serious I am about some of my sports, uh, I'll say one more example like this. I used to have friends, right? I grew up in the Bay Area, about a 30 to 40 minute drive from where the Golden State Warriors play. That's an NBA team in the States, uh, for those that don't know. And they weren't always so good. They've recently been one of the best teams in the league for many years now. But they weren't always so good, but I was a fan and I followed them even when they weren't good. And I had a lot of friends that we would never talk about that team or basketball in general but when they started winning championships, all of a sudden my friends would be like, hey, did you see the Warriors game? Did you see this game? And I'm like, you don't even know who they, who, who they played. You don't know anything about them. But because they're winning, it's like, yeah, I'm a fan now and I'm cheering for them. 
I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm the type that's like, okay, no, but if you're really going to cheer for them, then follow them. You know, then, then know about them. Then, and I don't want to just limit it to sports today. Oh, don't worry. I know some of you that aren't sports fans. I could feel it. Every time I talk sports, it's just natural for me. Then some of you start shredding me off. You're like, I don't care. I don't watch that. This isn't the States. Nobody watches basketball. But I want to let you know that it's not just limited to sports. And maybe that's just my mind when I hear fans and I follow my teams. I could tell you about the players, the management and all that stuff. But it's also relevant today and especially in our time when it comes to the Lord. Because today there's a lot of fans of Christ. And there's also followers of Christ. And that's why we're going to be discussing the two Because we don't want just fans of Christ. We want followers of Christ. Help me a little bit and ask your neighbor, are you a fan or are you a follower? It's easy to be a fan when it's going good. And a lot of people today like being a fan of Christ because the idea of Christ is powerful. Just the idea of a miracle working God is awesome. But to really experience experience those miracles those that's for the followers and a lot of fans of christ you know sometimes the struggle to just stick it out and see the miracle happen now just to list a few things and i hope this maybe could bring a little bit of perspective and fans of christ versus followers of christ one thing that stands out to me of fans of christ is they they become easily they're easily disloyal Fans of Christ don't really stay loyal to God. They're easily disloyal, and they also are easily discontent. When you're just a fan of Christ, it's easy to become discontent, and you're unsatisfied, and I don't like this, and I don't like that, and uh, they didn't say this nicely, and this person said this, and that person said that, and a lot of things like that happened with fans of Christ, and all of a sudden when they were content, and they love the Lord, and now something else happens outside of their control, and now they're discontent, and they're not happy. They're unsatisfied. Fans of Christ also easily become discouraged. Any hardship that comes, they're discouraged. I'm not going to church today. Oh, they said this, and they didn't do that. I'm not going anymore. I know not in this church, but I've heard it happens in other churches. Some people, some fans of Christ get like that sometimes. Easily discouraged. Any little hard thing comes, and why? Because a lot of times fans of Christ aren't really in their word as much as they could be. So then they forget that even God reminds us through his word that we're going to face trials and tribulations, meaning that life's not always going to be easy. Somebody say amen. Amen. Fans of Christ are also easily insecure. Anything happens, anybody says something, somebody doesn't like a post, somebody makes a comment, somebody types a comment, easily insecure. All of a sudden, somebody's opinion of them totally moves their compass in life. Insecure. A fan of Christ is also easily infatuated with things or with people. They're easily infatuated with the sound, with the person, with the way of doing things and kind of get stuck in certain things and it has to be a certain way and there becomes a a, a certain uh, entertainment of this one area that just, that's why I keep coming. I love, uh, and we have an awesome worship team, but some will just get infatuated with the sound and forget that we're here for Jesus. And I thank God for our worship team because they lead us to Jesus every service. Last thing I'll mention about fans of Christ is they easily become inconsistent. And not just in their church attendance, I know you're here today, thank God for that. But they can become easily inconsistent in their private life with the Lord. A fan of Christ, if you get a little tired, oh man, I didn't wake up in time, I guess I, you know, it's okay, God knows my heart, I I didn't pray today. Oh man, I felt that one, there was a shift right now. (laughs) <clears throat> but we, we all can struggle, but when you're a follower, you'll push through some things. You got to make sure you're following Christ, but fans of Christ, easily inconsistent with maybe reading God's word, uh, with spending time with God, with just being willing to learn and position yourself and uh, commit to something like Fresh Start and do certain things to grow in your walk with Christ. Now, on the flip side, A lot of it may seem obvious, but I'll go through them quickly. Followers of Christ are loyal. 
loyal to God. And I like how it was told to me once, you can't say you're loyal if you've never been given the opportunity to be disloyal. So you could say, yeah, I'm loyal, I'm loyal, but when it gets hard, do you stay loyal? You can't say it if you haven't been tested and your loyalty has been tested, and then instead of being disloyal, you stay loyal anyways. Followers of Christ are loyal. They remain content because they've read God's word. They stand on it, and then they know, okay, I'm content with and without. Followers of Christ are bold and courageous. They're not afraid because they know who fights their battles. They're not afraid of any Goliath or giant that comes their way because like David, they don't run to fight that Goliath on their own strength, in their own skill, but they say, I come in the name of the Lord. So there's a certain boldness and a courage that marks a follower of Christ. Followers of Christ also remain secure because they have found that their identity is in Christ. That it doesn't really matter what anybody else thinks. It doesn't matter what everybody else is saying. It doesn't matter what the crowd is shouting. My identity is in Christ. And I read his word and I rem I'm reminded that I'm the apple of his eye. I'm reminded that before I was in my mother's womb, he knew me. He already had a plan and a purpose for my life. So I'm secure in who I am because of the one who created me. Followers of Christ are also steadfast and not easily persuaded to this and that. And they're not tossed to and fro by the waves of life that come. And I know many of us can say amen that the waves of life come crashing down sometimes. But followers of Christ, they remain steadfast in the midst of any storm. Because they're anchored and rooted in Christ. Lastly, followers of Christ remain consistent no matter what challenges they face. Because they do understand that God's word reminds us that it may not always be easy, but it's always worth it when you're following him. That there's always a reward for what God has for us. There's always labor that's involved, but we know because of God's word that labor is never in vain. So followers of Christ remain consistent no matter what challenges they face. Now, I want us to point back a little bit and look at the scriptures that we opened up with once again. And let us remember that in these scriptures, these are two blind men that followed Christ until they got their miracle. These are two blind men that followed him until they were changed forever by the power of Jesus Christ. They were changed in such a way that they were able to all of a sudden see and experience life in a way they never had before but they had to follow him if you look at verse 27 in Matthew chapter 9 the Bible reads again when Jesus departed from there two blind men followed him crying out saying son of David have mercy on us now that's important to take note of because by them saying son of David they're directly referencing who they believe him to be and just for a little bit of context here, in this time, in this day and age, they would be heavily judged by that statement. Because by saying and shouting, son of David, they're declaring that he's the Messiah. And they weren't the only ones in the crowd. Remember the ones that took Jesus to Pilate and the ones that were crying out to crucify him were a lot of the religious leaders of that time. So in this time, it's safe to say that those two blind men, by shouting out, it showed that they didn't care what everybody else thought. Because the Pharisees and the religious crowd at that time would have looked at them and judged them for what they said. They would have looked at them and thought, who do you think you are saying that? How dare you? You ever had any family or friends, you start preaching to them and they have that kind of response? But I love this scripture because it shows that they didn't care what the crowd thought. They didn't care how others were going to view them. They knew who Jesus was and they weren't afraid to shout about it. Verse 28 says, and when he had come into the house, the blind man came to him. And Jesus said to them, do you believe that I am able to do this? They said to him, yes, Lord. Now, what I would like us to take note of in verse 28 is that the Bible says that when he had come into the house, then the blind man came to him. This means that the blind man didn't just shout it out, say, okay, Jesus, I know who you are. I know who you could be. Now, and let me just wait for you to come my way. No, no, no. They got busy and they followed him. 
they had to follow Jesus to where he was going to be. But I think sometimes, maybe it's just me, but especially if I read the Bible and I hear scripture and I hear stories and, and I've heard it before, uh, sometimes I'm guilty where I feel like I kind of lose the awe at times and I, I don't want to do this. So I remind myself how amazing it is of what I just read. What am I saying? These were two blind men that could not see. And there's a whole crowd of people and Jesus is moving and we can probably assume moving away from them, not going straight to them. And these blind men followed him. I don't know if like me, sometimes the devil tries to lie to me and make it seem like it's real hard to follow Christ. Like if it's too hard to do it, or so it's too hard to follow him. Oh, this is getting too much. This is, I've been there before in my walk with the Lord. And then I'm looking at scriptures like this and these blind men in the midst of a crowd and who knows how much of a chaotic scene it could have been, follow Jesus. Then I want to spiritually slap myself and say, what are you crying about? I have it a lot better off than most. I'm able to come to a, a great church like this. I'm able to sit under the word. I'm able to worship. I'm able to be taught. I'm able to go to Fresh Start. I'm able to go to a victory group. I have all these things that help me follow Christ. How dare I complain and feel like it's hard sometimes when these blind men said, you know what? I know who Jesus is and I'm going to follow him regardless of the circumstance. And I hope we can learn from them today to not let anything stop us from getting to Jesus today. Verse 29 then goes on to say that he, when he touched their eyes, he said, according to your faith, let it be to you. It was according to their faith. What kind of faith do we have this morning? See, they followed Christ. And as followers of Christ, there's a certain type of faith that we have. That I believe when we come to settings like this, because of the faith we have, not just because of the works we do, that adds to what we're called to do, but because of the faith we have, Jesus was able to look even at them at this time and say, because of your faith, here's what you're asking for. He didn't say, oh, because it was a bit hard. I know you can't see and you still followed and you made your way. And then we say, according to your faith, here you go. See, they had to follow to show their faith was real in who Jesus was. They weren't the only ones that were there that day. I bet that there was probably quite a few that wanted a miracle that day. Now, maybe this is more of me just kind of looking at the, the scriptures for what I could see it as and imagining the scene and imagining the setting. And it, I can see that there was probably a lot of fans of Christ at that gathering. That they saw who Jesus was and they saw him walking by. They liked the idea of what he could do, but maybe it was a little too difficult to follow him. And they missed out on their miracle that day. They missed out on what he could do, on what he could give. But then here's two blind men who couldn't even physically see. But because of their faith and their belief and their knowledge of who Jesus was as the Messiah, as the Son of God, they chose to follow anyways. And he says, according to your faith, let it be to you. If Jesus was to say, according to your faith today, what would be to you this morning? It challenges me in a way where, I'd, man, I need to have more faith. Now, one thing that I believe we could look at that distinguishes fans of Christ versus followers of Christ in a powerful way, and I like this portion of scripture because it reminds me of it, is that followers of Christ are very different from fans of Christ because they receive vision from Christ. See, we look at these blind men and now physically they received their sight. But I want to encourage somebody here this morning to say, if you want to follow Christ, the greatest thing you can do is receive vision from him. Vision for your life. Vision for your ministry. Vision for your family. Vision for whatever it is that God has. Who better to gain vision for your life from than the one that created you? See, so many of us, many of us, we don't have to raise our hands, but many of us at one time or another started cultivating and trying to go after and making up our own vision for our life. 
And it doesn't probably take too much hard thinking to see that that didn't always turn out so well. And even if it was great, even if it was good, it probably didn't last. Because the vision that we can have for our own life is never going to be as great as the vision that the one who gave us life in the first place can give us. So just as these blind men followed Christ and received their sight, I believe today many of us need to be able to follow Christ in such a way where we're able to receive the vision that he has for us. Because there's awesome things that take place when you catch the vision that God has for your life. I can only imagine that these blind men, as they followed Jesus, went through any challenges to make sure that they stayed following him. They get to Jesus and he says, according to your faith, let it be to you. And their eyes are open. Can you imagine the way they began to experience life? Can you imagine not being able to see and then all of a sudden you follow Jesus, he gives you sight. Can you imagine what the world feels like? Imagine if you were them. Imagine how awesome, how much joy. I bet you they couldn't stop smiling for who knows how long until their face got so sore that they couldn't anymore. And that's what happens to us when we get a vision from Christ for our life. Some of you are nodding because you've been there. You remember what it was like to be lost and bound and then when you decided to follow Christ and you gave your heart to him, all of a sudden you received a vision and said, man, I can be a man of God. I can be a woman of God. I can be a better husband. I can be a better father. I can be a better parent. I can be a better business owner. I can be a better steward. I can, I can, I can. What is that? That's vision from God. Where we used to look at ourselves and some of us, the only vision we could see was right in front of us. As much light, as much you could see that, that, that the light that came from the lighter you were holding with one hand. That was as much vision, that's as far as your vision went. Some of us, maybe we had big vision. Career, job, whatever it was, studies, all that. And that could still be there. But maybe some of us, we forgot that in order to have a big vision, you need a big God. You need big things to happen in your life to get you there, to, to elevate us to that level because God has so much more for us, but we need him to get there. I can only imagine how happy those blind men were to say, okay, I chose to follow Christ and not only did he just bless me, not only did he make me feel good, but he gave me vision. And when we get vision from God, some really great things start happening. Some awesome things start taking place in our life. And you know what's awesome is a follower of Christ who receives vision from God for their life. All of a sudden, not only are you happy, not only do you walk around with a different perspective of life, not only do you walk and now you're, you're content, not only do you walk around and now you feel strong and courageous to take on whatever challenges may come your way, but you start to begin to model things without even realizing it. All of a sudden, your life begins to speak all of a sudden, the way you walk, the way you talk, it starts influencing those around you. You know what one of those things is that you begin to model is just, it's faith. You know, it sounds simple for those of us that have been in church a lot, but I pray we never make it small in our eyes. The Bible reminds us in Hebrews chapter 11 that without faith, it's impossible to please God. So a follower of Christ, we receive Christ, we follow him, all of a sudden our eyes are open to a new way of life. And that new way of life requires faith because now our life is a life pleasing to him. And when we model faith, all of a sudden we're walking around different. Because then when challenges come, we say, no, 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 my God can. All of a sudden we walk around and because we're following Christ and we look at those others that followed Christ and those that have gone before us and we say, if they could do it, I could do it. If God could turn it around for them, then he could turn it around for me. If God could save their son, if God could save their daughter, then he could save mine. All of a sudden, faith begins to be activated on a whole nother level. Because now it's not just a fan of faith and what God can do, but we start to experience it because we're following him. Another thing that our life begins to model when we follow Christ is not only just faith, we have it, we cultivate it, we grow in it, but then all of a sudden we start to fight the good fight of faith. Followers of Christ understand that we're in a fight. Ah, oh, okay, you don't want to say amen to that one. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, we're in a fight. Now, if you were arguing with them before, don't take it personal, right? 
We're in the good fight of faith, as the Bible says. And I love this part because then it gives our life purpose. All of a sudden, we begin to see beyond the normal, beyond the natural, and we realize that, okay, hey, I need to stop fighting in the flesh all the time, and I need to fight in the spirit. All of a sudden, you start to pray more, and there is a hunger and a desire to grow in the things of God because you start to feel confident. You start to feel strong. You start to feel bold in the spiritual because you start to realize that the fight is not in flesh and blood. It's not with that person. It's not with your family. But it's against evil and there's good now and now I'm on the right side and not the wrong side and all of a sudden I'm not even fighting alone but look around you today you're a part of an army of the Lord you're a part of a house of God you're a part of an army that says we're willing to fight with you that's why I love our victory group leaders because they say you know what this fight isn't just for me but it's for others And I'm not just going to fight the good fight of faith on my own, but I'm going to reach my community. I'm going to reach my area. I'm going to reach this group of people, and I'm going to do what God's called me to do because there's a fight going on, and souls are in the balance. Ultimately, we start to fight, and you start to gain confidence because you know you're on the winning side. See, I love fighting because the vision that God gives us, and as we fight the good fight of faith, we realize that our vision is a vision full of victory. Oh, some of you will need to hear this this morning. Some of us have been fighting the good fight of faith for some time. I know I might still be a little bit younger in my walk with the Lord. And I, I, I salute those of you that have been fighting the good fight of faith for some years. And I, I, I commend you. And I want to encourage everybody who you feel like you've been in a battle. You feel like you've been fighting and you've been fighting and you've been fighting. And there doesn't seem to be an end. Keep on fighting. Keep on fighting. Because our fight is already won. It's a fixed fight. God just privileges us to fight the battles. God privileges us to pick up the sword and raise up that shield of faith and put on the helmet of salvation and cover our heart with the breastplate of righteousness and tighten up that belt of truth and put on those shoes of the gospel of peace and keep on marching forward. We fight the good fight of faith because we realize that the more I fight, the more he fights for me. Oh, hear me this morning. Some of us have been fighting. Sometimes just it's just that reshifting, that recalibrating, that refocus back to say, you know what? I'm going to fight some more. Yeah. See, I don't want to be one of those that walks into heaven and my armor's all shiny. I don't want to walk into heaven and say, oh, yeah, I was faithful to church and I, I, I sang so nice and I smiled so big, which I hope you do. Let's be friendly. But I don't mind if I walk into heaven with a little bit of a limp knowing I've been through some battles. I don't mind if I walk in and, and my armor's not as nice as somebody else's and maybe it's got some, some holes in it. Maybe it's taken some nicks and some dings and I've been hit and I, maybe my, my sword is not as sharp as it once was, but it's because I've been busy cutting down the enemy and been busy cutting down strongholds and I want to enter into heaven knowing that I fought the good fight of faith because everything that God's blessed me with here, I'm not going to take it, but I can take the satisfaction of knowing that I fought the good fight of faith. I want to walk into heaven knowing that I did my part, knowing that I fought. The worship team can make their way. You know why this is so awesome about following Christ? Not only do we get to fight the good fight of faith and we stand on God's word and he's not a man that he could lie in. As we fight for him, he fights for us. Like the song says, even when you can't see it, he's working. So I don't always see what God's doing. And I can tell you time and time again, I would be fighting the good fight of faith and then have those moments and think, what about me? What about my brother that's still lost? What about, but then I have to pick up my shield and now I got to keep fighting. I got to keep fighting. I got to keep fighting. And I can share as a testimony now that I'm mentioning my brother today. Sometimes we talk about the Lord today. At one time, he was lost and bound in gangsterism, and I kept fighting and fighting on my knees and fighting in prayer and fighting for those that are still lost and bound. And then God's beginning to do a work in his life, and sometimes he'll say, pray for me. Because I kept fighting. But you know what followers have a unique ability to do? Followers of Christ not only just have faith to fight the good fight of faith, But followers of Christ have a unique ability to stay focused on the future. They don't get stuck 
in the current circumstance. They don't just see what's right in front of them. That's like what a fan does. Even for a team, a fan cheers when it's good, but it's silent when it's bad. No, no, no. A follower of Christ is cheering no matter what for their brothers and sisters. It's cheering through the bad, cheering through the hard times, cheering when it's good, celebrating everything that God's doing because they know that this isn't the end. Followers of Christ have an amazing ability because of the faith that's cultivated in their life as they learn and they grow in the things of God to always stay focused and have a vision for the future. It may start off as a future for your own life to just get out of where you're at today. It may start off as a vision to see the future for your family, to see a brighter future for that next generation, to see a brighter future for your career, whatever it may be. But as we follow Christ, that focus on the future begins to widen and it begins to broaden. And you know what God does? He starts to show you that it's not just about you. All of a sudden, that vision just begins to grow. And you see, man, I actually feel good fighting the good fight of faith. Not everyone understands it. My coworkers, they think I'm crazy. They say, you're going to church again? My, my family doesn't understand. Why, why would I give and, and not buy this and not buy that? Because they don't have the same vision that you do. And all of a sudden, God begins to broaden that vision. And he begins to increase it and grow it. And all of a sudden, we realize it's not about me. And if there's anything I've learned, is that the more I fight and the more I stay focused on the future, the easier the fight gets. Because then as I'm fighting for others, I stand on God's word. And it's, if I'm being any one of a blessing to somebody else, he's blessing me. I stand on God's word and say, okay, I'm going to fight the good fight of faith and I'm going to help build this house. I'm going to build the house of God because his word says that he's going to build mine. So then all of a sudden I'm free from worry of my own life. I take care of business. I make sure I'm a good steward, but I don't worry. I'm not anxious for anything. I keep it in prayer and I keep fighting. And all of a sudden God begins to bless me. All of a sudden, God begins to say, here you go. Because then he sees the faith of why I'm fighting. And remember the two blind men, they had the faith. They had vision from the Lord. But it was because, it was because according to their faith. is according to your faith today. According to your faith today. According to your faith today. That faith may start with our own life today where we're at right now but ultimately as we follow Jesus and we receive a vision from the Lord and you know what I want to encourage somebody right now some of you don't know what God has for your life and for your future yet it's okay hear me whoever this is for you don't feel like you know what God has for your life yet it's okay because there's a vision that he's given us as a body this I can even testify to that personally I didn't really think I was ever going to become a pastor or be a preacher or anything like that but I loved the vision of the house I loved the fact that the ministry was about reaching people that they would do one time a year and raise finances like crazy but not even to buy any of the pastors anything but to buy the church something to launch another church to keep the recovery home doors free open for free to do things like that. I loved the vision of the house. And as I received that vision and made it my own, all of a sudden God began to reveal the vision that he had for my life. And all of a sudden I began to see, okay, God has something for me. And then I realized, okay, man, I can fight because it's not about my skill and my knowledge. It's about my relationship with the Lord. And when I understand who he is and I'm not worried about what others think anymore. And like the blind man, I'm willing to shout out loud and stand out in the crowd at my high school and stand out at my university and stand out at my workplace. I'm gonna be able to fight the good fight of faith because I'm following Christ. I'm gonna ask you in the presence of the Lord that you could feel here right now to stand with me this morning. I want to close.
close with this scripture. Matthew 16, 20 through 26, the Bible reads, Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone desires to come after me, or in other words, if anybody decides or chooses to follow me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? This morning, I want to encourage us not only just to follow Christ in our own way, And I know that there's many of us here that God's given you a vision for your life. God's already said, this is what you're called to do. This is why I saved you. This is why I saved your parents. This is why your family comes. This is what you're a part of. Not only just to follow Christ and, okay, let's see how it goes, but I believe today and we need to make a declaration to the enemy that I'm a follower of Christ. You look around the world today, there's a lot of fans of Christ, celebrities, athletes, anybody could name drop Jesus. Doesn't mean that their life is following him. And I believe it's a danger that we're facing today in the church where we can come and go, but ultimately we might not really see that we're kind of falling into that same category as a fan of Christ and we're not truly following him like we should. And I want to give us the opportunity today to come together as one. This isn't so much of the normal altar call. I just want to pray with everybody before I hand it over. But I want us to say a prayer together. And why I felt the Lord leading like this even in the first service is a lot different than what I had in mind. But there's been a, uni a unity that's, that's coming on our church and where we're going, where we're heading, because there is one vision in this house that God's given us and we're marching like the song they were sharing earlier. We're marching, we're moving. But some of us today, you might be fighting those battles, but you feel like you're on your own. You don't have to fight on your own anymore. You just make it clear to the enemy that you're a part of the army of the Lord and you take a stand with your brothers and your sisters, you watch the strength that comes upon your life. You get connected to a victory group, to some type of setting throughout the week, and you watch as you begin to learn how to yield that sword like a skilled warrior. So here's what I'd like us to do today. and I know many of us are in the fight. You're fighting the good fight. And I pray that you would join us and, and back me up in this this prayer this morning but I would love for us to just tell the enemy today I'm a follower of Christ I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be a fan and just watch anymore I'm not gonna be a fan and just act like I don't know better when it suits me I'm gonna follow and if you're already committed then let's make that statement to say this is forever and what I'd love for us to do is just to pray together, but I want to make that declaration and tell the Lord led me to do it the first service. I feel the same today in, this, in the second service. It's just for you to step out of your seat quickly and let's just pray together here at the altar. If you're just, you already know you're a follower of Christ, then join me at the altar this morning. If you're here and you're a little bit undecided, I would want to encourage you to make that declaration to the enemy to say, devil, you're not going to mess with me no more. You're not going to feel... Like you're gaining victory on me because I'm not fighting this battle alone. I'm a part of an army of God. And I'm fighting with my brothers and my sisters right next to me. We're in the fight together. We are one.